Hey you guys. Yes, 2020 Revive Online. Welcome, guys. We're yeah. so excited to be here with you. Yeah, for those who don't know us, or if you didn't meet us at the campfire on Friday, we go by the names of Joshua and Rachel. Yep, we're married. We live in South London. We are a part of an ICFIS congregation down here. And we've been part of SAS for a couple of years now, and we absolutely love it. Mm. And um, we're so glad that we get to be with you this weekend. Yeah, if you're new to SAS, if this is your first year in SAS, a huge, huge welcome to you. We're so grateful to have you logged on. And we hope you've accessed and enjoyed some of the things, some of the SAS things already. And we're really praying and expecting that this will be a significant time for you. Yeah, and if you're um, an SAS veteran, you've been a part of this group for a while, then we're so mm. glad to have you guys back. And we're so looking forward to next year coming and gathering again in person at Ashburnham. Yeah, you may see or hear some familiar faces, some familiar voices, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Um, you may have already seen or heard that the title for today's session is I'll Be Back. And sorry to disappoint anyone who's expecting Arnold Schwarzenegger, but we are thinking about someone much, much better. We're thinking about Jesus. And... Some of you know that Jesus was the original one to promise that he will be back. Jesus promised he's coming back to this earth for a second time. And through the session, we're going to be unpacking a bit about what that promise is, what he's promised and how that impacts your life today. That's something we really want to focus on. And maybe to start off, I just want to ask you a question. What is the first thing that comes to your mind? What do you think of when you hear that Jesus has promised to come back to this earth again? And also maybe another question is what kind of person do you think of when you think of someone who really believes or talks a lot about the fact that Jesus is coming back to this earth? Hear ye, hear ye! <laughs> Jesus is coming back! Turn or burn, people! Turn or burn. I've got to be able to find the day somewhere. All my days. Jesus could come back at any moment. Jesus is coming back at any moment. Are you sure you want to be making a tea when he comes back? Are you sure you want to be sleeping when he comes back? Leave me alone. Are you sure you want to be in the toilet when he comes back? <laughs> okay, so... Obviously, those are just ridiculous caricatures. Yeah. But the truth is that when you have those kind of images in your head about what it looks like to take Jesus' second coming seriously, mm -hmm. it can really um, stop us from thinking more about this promise that he made. Yeah. And it can make us not really want to have anything to do with it, I think. And mm -hmm. I know I've definitely been in a place where the idea of Jesus' second coming has felt like a religious idea, like a kind of theological mm -hmm. concept that hasn't really impacted me very much it doesn't really hasn't really changed my relationship with Jesus hasn't really changed my relationship with the world um, and with the people I interact with and it's felt kind of irrelevant to me and maybe actually you're somebody who has thought quite a lot about this stuff um, in a more healthy way than maybe some of those caricatures um, but maybe you're like me and it hasn't really impacted you it's felt kind of irrelevant and not really part of your life yeah and it's such a shame when those extreme caricatures steal away this as a part of our faith is such an important thing. And when it's part of our worldview, it really transforms our lives and the way we relate to Jesus. For the first Christians, the early church, this was such an important thing. They saw it as such an important part of their faith. They talked about it, they sung about it, they preached about it, and it impacted, it changed the way they did their daily lives. But yet, they didn't go about like some of those caricatures we just saw. And so what we want to do is we want to unpack what this promise is, how it affects our lives today, 
and how we can live as true followers of Jesus who believe and hold on to him and his promise to come back but don't go off like some of those maybe crazy examples. We want to be genuine radical followers of Jesus. So I just wanted to share a bit with you guys um, my journey in kind of understanding some of these things and seeing it impact my life. A lot of you will know I became a Christian around the age of 21 and for probably about the first two years of following Jesus, this idea of Jesus coming back didn't feature, wasn't a part of my faith at all. Um, and I think that was probably partly to do with the fact that this idea of kind of heaven or anything after this life felt a bit intangible. But my life now and how my faith interact with my life now felt very tangible, felt very relevant. And I think probably quite consciously sometimes I even chose not to think about it. And I can remember even like kind of really believing that that could never change, that this was always just some kind of strange kind of religious truth that never really would ever be relevant for me. And there wasn't any miraculous moment of change. There wasn't any light bulb moment. But as I engaged and read more about what the Bible actually says about the time when Jesus comes back, it really started to change and shift the way I felt and thought about it. Particularly when I learnt that when Jesus comes back, he's going to bring in a new earth. And so the idea that it was going to be similar to what we know and experience now on earth, there was going to be similarities. And that really helped it to feel much more grounded and much more real to me. And as I kind of learned and read more and just tried to put God's word into action more, this truth that Jesus was coming back became so much more a real part of my everyday life and affected my life so much more. Um, one of the things I love so much about my faith and I love doing this with other people is just talking and joking and imagining and guessing some of the things. What is it going to be like? when Jesus brings in this new and perfect earth? Is it going to rain? Um, or what kind of, what's sports going to be like? Kind of all these different questions. It's just so interesting to think about. Are we going to eat meat? Um, so many questions. And I really love that. And it just shows how much real and how much more real this kind of truth has become to me. But also it's really shaped my life now in some very kind of very, very, different ways. One of them is how I engage with pain and suffering in the world. When I see and experience pain and suffering, I think now I have so much more hope. Do you know, when we see something really painful or just something really sad in this world, it's really, um, it kind of really just can really eat us up. And sometimes we can feel quite disappointed and I used to experience that a lot and I still do to some extent but now that I know and really believe that Jesus is coming back for a second time and he's going to set all things right it really changes the way I feel and engage with pain and suffering and actually it's produced this beautiful part of my prayer life that I didn't have before where I can look at painful things in this world and cry out to Jesus in a very real way. Come back, Lord Jesus, set this right. I think lastly, just another way it's really changed my life is it's given me so much more urgency. Um, I'm sure you probably all have kind of Christian friends or role models, youth workers, people in your church that are just super evangelistic. They're super excited about evangelism. And I think having a, a good understanding of the second coming for me this being more a part of my reality has meant that I have more of that fervour and more of that urgency to see other people find this faith and hope that I have as well. And, do you know, it's not just 
simply learning knowledge that has changed my kind of perspective on it. That was part of it. But actually, the Holy Spirit had to apply that knowledge to my heart. In other words, the Holy Spirit had to give me revelation. And so I want to pray for us and I want to invite you actually to pray with me that as we go through the rest of this session and we learn different things, different truths about Jesus coming back, that it wouldn't be just knowledge, but the Holy Spirit would apply it to our hearts and it would be something that really, really changes our life from this point on. So I'm going to pray and I want to invite you to pray the words I pray. And I'm going to start by praying the words of a psalm. Father, make your face shine upon your servants and teach us your truth. Lord, the things that we hear, your truths, Lord, we know we need your Holy Spirit to truly know them and walk in them and live them out. So, Lord, I want to pray that you would send your spirit on my life, on, e on every single person listening to this life, to know these truths more deeply, that they would seep to the deep places of our heart and that we would be changed and transformed to have more of a Jesus worldview, to have more of Jesus-like lives, Jesus-like -like relationships, Jesus-like thoughts. Lord, I just want to pray that this would be a significant time for each and every single one of us. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, Kadeem, it's time to watch the news. It's for them. the presenter is that hilarious guy from Rabai, who um, he's always at SAS like every single year since I can remember. And um Sometimes he even like MCs the talent show. He's so funny. This is this he's I heard that he's been doing the news recently. Should we just have a look at it? I'll just play it. And next on BBC One it's the news, followed by the latest from Strictly. Police investigate claims of mass lockdown contraventions. We report exclusively on the growing problem of finger gun violence. Are too many innocent, cute animals at risk? Tonight on The Big Fight, Alan from Rotherham faces off against Colin the Canada Goose from Calgary. Does Alan know what he's facing? Alan's defensive weapon of choice appears to be a rolled up issue of The Economist magazine. It's a bold strategy from Alan. Will it be successful? Colin is in retreat and regrouping. And oh my, it's an attack from the air. Alan will be defenseless. A flurry of wings and it looks to be all but over. Isn't nature magnificent? All jokes aside, nature really is magnificent. And I'm not just talking about dancing animals, but the whole of God's creation, the whole of nature is so amazing in its diversity and its complexity and its beauty. Whether it's hanging out at Ashburnham or looking out on the vast open sea, or even just taking a stroll in your local park. We all feel this kind of inherent connection with nature, with God's creation. And we've all experienced seeing this beauty and it just touching us in deep places. But I think we also all know that as beautiful as nature is, as beautiful as God's creation is, it's also very broken and very corrupted. You know, I'm thinking about things like earthquakes and tsunamis or pollution and climate change, wildfires or even deadly viruses that seem to crop up in nature and we don't have a clue how. Do you know, the Bible in Romans 8 describes this agony, this pain that God's creation is in. 
it describes the whole of God's creation being in pains like a woman during childbirth. It's groaning and it's waiting for this moment of new life. And that moment is the day that Jesus returns to this earth. Because his promise is to renew this whole earth. That means renewing the whole of nature, renewing the whole of creation. And it means that we're going to be able to enjoy and explore the whole of God's creation without any of its brokenness or corruption. Isn't that good news? One of the things that we love the most about SAS is when we've been able to share prophetic words with each other. Mm. And all that is, is when God speaks to us for other people. Yeah. And there's been some wonderful stories at SAS over the years when people yeah. have shared words and it's really impacted people's lives. And mm. this year, obviously, we can't do that as a big group, but we still wanted to have a bit of a prophetic slot so you get a real SAS taste this year. Mm. So we've been asking God to share things with us. So Josh is going to share first what God's been saying to him for you guys, and then I'll share, and then we'll talk a little bit about how you can respond to those different words. Yeah, so I had three prophetic words. The first one was for us as a whole group, for the whole of SAS, and it was a picture of a crab upside down on its belly, and it was scratching the middle of its belly with its little legs. <laughs> and um, the interpretation of this was that it's time for us as a group to start taking our own spiritual satisfaction, our own spiritual health, health into our own hands. So maybe growing up as teenagers, we've re relied a lot on youth workers and church and parents, which is understandably so. But the Lord is challenging us now in this time that it's time to start taking things into our own hands and take responsibility for our relationship with Jesus. The second word was for a particular person and I felt this particular person having grown up in church maybe or grown up with God was starting to explore life without God. So they were making an active decision to say that I want to explore the other things that interest in me in life without God. And there was a particular verse that came to my mind. It's in Psalm 139 and it's where the psalmist says, where can I go from your spirit? And I felt like maybe that summed up the person's attitude, having explored life without God, but realising that there's only so far they can go without him. And if that resonates with you, I believe the Lord is wanting to say to you, come, come back home. I'm welcoming you back home. Come and do life with me. The last prophetic word again was for a specific person. And this was quite a specific word. I saw a picture of the UK and there was a rainbow starting in one place of the UK and ending in another place. And there was also a picture of a comic book. And so I felt this was for someone who is currently living in between two different parts of the UK. And also this person is interested in comic books, perhaps. And I wasn't sure of the exact interpretation, but I felt that the rainbow represented a promise of God. And I wonder if... This is you, that God has already promised you something in regards to your living situation, being in these two different places. And he just wanted to affirm that he is faithful to keep his promises and to remind you of that. Brilliant. And um, I had a couple of words as well that I'd love to share. So one is I just felt God was giving me this word of a freedom seeker. And I felt what he was saying is that um, there might be people like you guys watching who feel trapped or stuck in a certain place and like freedom isn't possible and he was saying freedom is possible in Jesus yeah. Jesus can break the chains and he wants us to be freedom seekers so he wants us to come to him and seek freedom um the second word I had was um I had a little picture of somebody wearing a face mask and obviously there are face masks everywhere at the moment and I felt that the interpretation of that was that somebody was feeling that um over lockdown and coronavirus that their ability to communicate with God had been silenced. They felt silenced and unable to speak. And I felt that God was saying he wanted to restore intimate relationship where you can share openly and um, freely with him um, and taking away that, that mask from your relationship with him. Mm. And then the third um, picture I got or little um, kind of word from the Lord I didn't have an interpretation for it, but I wanted to speak it out anyway in case it resonates with somebody. And I just had 
bird song, I was just kept, kept coming into my mind that a beautiful singing that birds do in the morning. And I just wondered if somebody out there, if you've been talking to God about bird song or someone's already given you a word about that and you just wanted to affirm it again. So those are the different things that we felt God saying. Yeah, so a couple ways, a couple things you can do to respond to those. Um, the first thing is we just really encourage you to talk to someone about it if you feel God has spoken to you. Mm -hmm. We really recommend your parents maybe or a youth worker or just a good friend who you know um, has a faith in Jesus as well. And it's really good to pray about it with someone and to ask God to confirm and speak into um, that some more. The second thing is we would love you to get in touch with us that you're under no obligation to but we would love to be encouraged if the Lord has spoken to you through one of these prophecies so there's going to be an email coming up at the bottom of the screen and we'd love you to email in an encouragement if God has spoken to you or if you'd like to speak to us further about that so I'm just going to pray to close this session Father thank you so much you're a God who communicates with us Lord and we just bless you, Lord. We bless you for speaking to us now, Lord. And I just pray if any of these words are for anyone in particular, Lord, that you would really highlight that to them. Um, and Lord, if, if any of these words weren't from you, Lord, we just pray that they would kind of just wash away and wouldn't mm. get stuck in anyone's mind. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. So we've just heard about how creation is going to be totally restored when Jesus comes back and how amazing that is. And I want to talk about another part of Jesus' return that I've been thinking about a lot recently that I just think is amazing and um, can really change the way we interact with the world. And um, that's really based around all these questions of the deep injustices and things that are happening around the world. And obviously over the last couple of months with um, the murder of George Floyd and all the Black Lives Matter things going on, but also things like um, I've been thinking a lot about the fashion industry and how there's deep injustice within that um, or if there's other things like where our food is made or um, flood, people really struggling with poverty and things like that. There's so much pain and uh, distress and abuse all over the world and um, we can feel totally powerless in it a lot of the time and there are things that we can do and that's part of our a uh, role as Christians is to pray for God's kingdom to come and for things to be changed and for us to act for justice. Um, but what I've been reading recently um, in the Bible is that Jesus promises that when he comes back, there's going to be a total justice given and the people who are being oppressed are going to be lifted up and the people who in this life have never been accountable to anybody, they're too rich for anybody to ever be able to put them in prison or make them pay back the um, God's going to call them to account and I think sometimes in the West we don't like talking about God's justice because um, we don't often feel that much oppression because really we're very privileged but for people who feel who are really oppressed having a God of justice is such good news and it I just think it's it's just amazing that God is going to call people to account when he comes back to earth and people are going to be freed and um, and finally comforted from all the oppression that they faced on earth and i was reading in um revelation 21 it's a it's a really beautiful chapter i'd recommend you go and have a read of it um, and it's about jesus speaking about what it will be like when he's king over the earth when he comes back and he talks about how he's going to wipe away every tear there'll be no more mourning or crying or death and it comes alongside the fact that he's going to judge the people who have been acting out all that oppression going to judge the people who have been abusing and have never been held accountable and in that judgment he's going to bring comfort and peace to people who have been um, oppressed and that I think that's just amazing news it gives me so much hope when I look out at the injustice of the world now I'm just so thankful that God cares and he's going to do something about it um, so that's what I really wanted to talk about how God is a God of justice and we already know that but that's going to come into its fullness when Jesus comes back in your heart, we've been exercising your minds, and now we're going to exercise our bodies.
So we've talked about creation, how that's going to be restored when Jesus comes back. We've also talked about justice, how that's going to come in all of its fullness when Jesus comes back. And I want to talk about one more thing. Um, so if you're anything like me, which I'm sure some of you are, um, praying can sometimes feel so difficult. Reading the Bible can sometimes feel so difficult. Sometimes it feels like God is distant or separate to us. Um, sometimes it can feel like we, we've got a faith that doesn't feel very real. Um, and sometimes it doesn't feel like that at all. Sometimes it feels alive and exciting and very real to us. And that's the reality of being a human being. When we're here on earth, our relationship with God is not in its fullness. Um, we've got God pours out his amazing Holy Spirit so that we can meet him here on earth in an amazing way. But there's this promise when Jesus comes back that our relationship with him is going to be completely complete. And going back to Revelation 21, um, it says that God will be with us and we'll be with him. He'll be our God and we'll be his people. He'll live with us and we'll live with him. That's such an amazing thing. You don't ever question the reality of the person who lives in the house with you. It's just normal. It's just real that they're there. And that's going to be the same with our relationship with God. He's just going to be living with us and we're going to be living with him it's going to be so real so intimate and personal and that's just such an amazing promise of what it's going to mean when jesus comes back that our relationship with him is going to be completely full so i've been doing some thinking yeah we've been doing quite a lot of talking and i'm wondering if people are going to start getting bored of our voices a bit yes okay what should we do about it well funny you should say that because we've invited the one and only SAS hero, Steve Benton, to come and share with us. He's someone we love so much. If you've been a part of SAS before, I'm sure you love him so much as well. And up until now, we've kind of spoke a lot about what this promise is of Jesus' return to this earth, what it means for the world. But Steve's going to be focusing on what it means for our lives today, how it impacts the way we live in the here and now. Hi everyone, my name is Steve Benton and it's an absolute honour and privilege to be streaming out to, uh, to Virtual Revive SAS 2020. So, um, so you're probably wondering where I am um, today. I'm at Whitley Bay um, in Northumberland, in Northumberland and, which is kind of around Newcastle Way and uh, it's great. The sun is shining, look at that. we've got a lovely coastline so I thought I would share with you today as I walk along the beach. So here we go. So our encouragement today is how can we be ready for Jesus? How can we be ready for Jesus' return? It says in the word that Jesus will return again one day, that we will see him return in the clouds. It says that the dead will rise to be with him. Those in him will rise um, towards him. So what an amazing thing to be able to look forward to. It could be in our generation. Um, who knows? In fact, if you look at Matthew 24, 44, it says, so you must, it says, so you must be ready because the Son of Man will come at an, at an hour when you do not expect him. You know, Jesus himself doesn't even know the, uh, the hour or the day. Only God the Father knows. That's what it says in the Bible. Um, so if we take uh, Matthew 24, 44, 4, and we think, well, how can we apply this to us? How can this help us? Well, it, it talks about being ready. Being ready to meet Jesus, being ready for Jesus' return. We are all going to meet Jesus one day, whether that's on this earth or whether that's when we, we, we go to heaven. Um, we will meet him face to face. We want to be ready, don't we? We want to be ready. We want to have done our best in life. We want, to, we want to have run the race in life. Jesus has an amazing plan and purpose for each one of your lives. And he wants you to grab hold of that plan and purpose. And he wants you to walk that in your lives. He doesn't want you to give up. He doesn't want you to feel down. He doesn't want you to be held back. He wants you to step forward and take hold of the things that he's given you. And I believe that is um, a real revelation and that is a promise that we can take hold of. And we, can, and we know that God is a good God and he wants to give us good things. He wants to bless our lives. He doesn't want to hold us back. He wants us to move forward with him. So how can we be ready for Jesus? How can we be ready one day to meet Jesus? 
Well, I think there's two things that can really help us and encourage us. So, number one is invest your time wisely. Every day is a gift. Every day we have 24 hours. What do we do in that time? You know, do we seek first the kingdom of God? It says in the Bible, seek ye first the kingdom of God. Everything else will be added to you. You don't need to worry about anything else as long as we're seeking God. As long as we're seeking Him. What does it mean to seek Jesus? Well, it means to take time out. It means to perhaps come away from, from what we might be busy doing, what we might be distracted doing. Take some time out and spend some time with Jesus. You might be praying, might be reading the Bible. You might just be thinking about Him and seeing what He's got to say to us. Seeking first the will that God has in our lives is really important. So I want to encourage you to do that. Invest your time wisely. There's a story in the Bible of a master and he gives, um, he gives some talents, which is some money. He gives some money to three of his servants. And he says to his three servants, here you go, I'm going to give you some money each. This isn't the word that he gave them talents and they had so many talents each. And then he went away and he said to them, I want you to invest this money wisely. I often think that when I hear that story of those talents of that money being given to the servants, it's like God has entrusted us with these lives that we live. We've got amazing lives, haven't we? You know, we can do so many cool things. But the Lord wants us to invest our lives, invest our time wisely. And the story of the three servants goes kind of like this, that the two of the three servants, they went out and um, they did different things with their, with their money. They invested it, um, they, they worked, worked it well, um, and, um, and basically they doubled what they had. And the master came back, he called his three servants to find out what happened. And of course the two of them had done really well and they were really, really pleased with what they'd done and the master was really, really thankful because those, that money that he'd given them, they had invested it wisely. Of course, the third one, what had he done with it? Well, he got called forward, he saw his master, and he looked pretty sad because all he did with his money is he buried it in the ground. That's what it says in the, in the word. He buried his talent in the ground. He thought it would be safe if he just buried it away. He didn't want to step out, didn't want to take you know, uh, the opportunity to, to invest that money wisely. He did not take good care of what the master had given him. And that's... That's really a, a, a story of, of, of <coughs> choice that we have, excuse me. We have a choice. We can invest our time wisely or we can just get caught up in the everyday things and the days just go past and you kind of wonder where time has gone. Well, I want to encourage you to be like those two servants that took those talents, that took their time and they made it count. And you know, God wants you to make your life count for him. You know, he's there for you. He's always there to pick you up when you trip up, when you fall down. Um, he's there for you all the time. So that's point one, invest your time wisely. Okay, so point two is invest your resources wisely. Invest your resources wisely. You guys and girls, you've got many talents. All right, you may think that you haven't got anything. You may think, well, I haven't really got enough money. You know, everything I've got is other people's. I don't really have a lot, but you do. You know, God has given you many gifts, many talents for you to use. Even just going up to somebody and encouraging them, even just saying to somebody how lovely they look, even maybe going to help somebody with something that they need some help in. Spending your uh, resources, giving your time, giving what you've got to somebody else to make a difference to them is an encouraging thing. You know, there's a story in the Bible um, of, of when Jesus was uh, sitting in the temple and he was watching people give an offering. He was watching people give an offering and there was lots of rich people that were giving quite a lot of money. And then there was this poor widow. And, um, and you know what, she put, I think she put a, a, a penny in the offering. It wasn't very much, it was quite a small amount. Jesus noticing said to his disciples, that woman has put more in the offering than all these rich people, you see, because these rich people, they give their offering out of their riches. But this widow, this poor lady, she brings her offering out of everything she has. She gave her last penny. She gave her everything. 
So sometimes it's not about how much you give, it's the kind of heart and the way that you give it. So I want to encourage you with the resources that you have, with what God has given you, team up with the Holy Spirit every day and have a think about how you can make a difference to people's lives. How can you share God's love with somebody? How can you encourage somebody? Maybe you're going to pray for somebody that's sick and see them, see them get healed. Why not? We can all do that. We can all do that. Step out in those gifts that the Lord has given you. And if you don't know if you've got the gift of healing, just start stepping out in faith and, and believe that you've got it. Ask the Lord to, to uh, bless you with that gift and start using it. I often think that those that um, take hold of God's gifts are the ones that use the gifts. You know, they're the ones that use it. So, if you want to start seeing people that you know healed, then guess what? We're going to start praying for them. So I want to encourage you to step out, seek ye first the kingdom of God, spend time with the Lord, be ready for his return. And I would say, love God and love people. Invest your time and invest your resources towards him. So here we go. I'm going to leave you. Um, now and uh, wish you all the best for this next year. There we are from the sunny sands and sea of Whitley Bay and, um, and from me have a great 2020 and we'll see you hopefully in 2021. Wow great there's so much in there for us to be grabbing hold of and we wanted to give you guys an opportunity to respond. Um, so we've asked our friend April and she's going to sing a song of worship now and it's just a chance for you to talk with God yourself. So like we were saying, taking ownership over your faith journey and asking the Holy Spirit to embed some of the truths that we've been talking about in this session or to be challenging you about how you're using your time and your resources um, like Steve was talking about just now. So this is your opportunity to respond, to talk to the Lord yourself and I'm just going to pray for us before we do that. So, Lord Jesus, thank you that you speak to us and we come, Lord, with open hearts. Amen.
Guys, it's been such a pleasure to share with you. Um, we've had so much fun and we really hope that you have. We hope that the Lord has spoken to you through some of the things we've shared. We hope that he's building in some lasting things into your life and into your relationship with him. Yeah, we've loved uh, connecting with you, even though it's had to have been over YouTube and Zoom. But mm. we really hope that and look forward to in 2021 gathering with you guys at Ashburnham and doing SAS then with you. So, yeah, we're really, really looking forward to that. Yeah, we really want to encourage you just to remind you if any of the prophecies did speak to you, we would love to hear about it. We'd love to hear a testimony. So please do email that in to admin at ichthus.org.uk. Yep. And the other thing we wanted to remind you is that Mike Pilavacci is coming to speak tomorrow mm. at the celebration. He's absolutely brilliant. I grew up listening to him talking. And if you've not heard him before, you'll love him because yeah. he's brilliant and funny and great. So do sign on for that tomorrow morning and listen to that. And otherwise, we'll see you in 2021. Bless you guys.